If you live in the U.S. and you turn on your TV at any time of day or night, you're likely to find an episode of America's Funniest Home Videos, or AFV as they call it now, playing. On the chance that you've never seen it, people send their videos of themselves or, or friends or family doing some stupid stuff for amazement for the viewers anywhere. A lot of these involve injuries of some sort. Mostly things like getting mistaken for a pinata or some dude getting kicked in the groin. A friend of mine at who moved to Mexico a few months back sent me an email one day with a video attached. You'll not believe this, it said. Looking for something to watch late at night, I found this to be playing on the satellite channel that seems to work randomly. Caught off some of my cell, I got and had gotten this email from someone else. I would have deleted it if it was thinking it was a, either a hacked email or a prank, but my friend was a lifelong long insomniac with a taste of for weird, so I decided to go ahead and watch it. Apparently it was a Christmas themed episode. The host, Tom Bergerjohn, was wearing a Santa hat and decorated the tree adorned its set. The first of the many strange things was that there was no audience, just Tom, sitting in a chair and smirking as the intro introduced the show, the videos. The sound of the video was muffled, but I could hear Tom's voice that had been dubbed over in Spanish. The videos were all Christmas themed and it got progressively more disturbing. The ones in the file included, one, a man has decorated a tree out, out on a balcony. He's standing on a chair and putting a star on top when a man dressed as Santa pops out and scares him. The man is startled and losing his footing, falls over the balcony and on down to the ground, one of his arms obviously dislocated. Two, a young boy was opening his present and pulls out wads and wads of tissue paper from the box. He finally gets to what's wrapped inside an animal trap that was made wide with metal teeth that snapped down on his wrist. He screams and flails as his blood spurls out onto the tissue paper and onto the camera. A blonde woman staring straight into the camera grins as she crushes the colorful glass ornaments in her bare hands, then shoves it in her mouth, chewing it. She repeats this a few times, laughing with their mouth full of glass shards and blood. A group of kids were singing carols in front of the fireplace with their family members to watch. One man who's got putting up the stockings on the mantle behind the misfires is nail gun, and several go into the little girl's eye, attaching her to the mantle. The other children stop and stare at her, thinking the songs were done, and the adults started to clap. A crowd was gathered around the home, admiring the live nativity scene. A car drives up and a man dressed up as a ninja pop jumps out and shoots randomly. The woman dressed as Mary drops the baby Jesus, who gets trampled in the melee. A family who is trying to put together a metal Christmas tree sculpture, with one man holding the rods together, while another inserts the ones from the top. The final rod doesn't go in correctly, and instead rips through the man's face. His daughter is standing behind him and gets splattered with his blood. After that last video, the episode ended with Tom saying goodnight, with one of his usual contests where the three best videos are picked, one of them wins the 10 grand. I can't imagine any of the audience would sit there through that, much less vote for them. Maybe why there isn't one? I think it was a hoax or a sick parody, with the host who looked like Tom Bergeron, but didn't wasn't really like him. But my friends swear it was. It was a similar episode to the other American shows that had the exact same channel. She couldn't tell me that because it was not listed anywhere near the satellite guide. It usually doesn't work. She can't even look up the number because she can only find it by flipping through the channels. Pressing info, what she got was found it that makes it stop working. She's recorded some of the other stuff that she's seen but I have asked her not to send any more to me. And that, my little pretties, was America's Funniest Videos Banned Episode. A America's Funniest Videos Lost Episode Creepypasta. My final thoughts on this story? 
Okay, um, I've heard of this story from, you know, a few people such as, um, Dave the Useless who narrated this one, and I mean, a lot of people from the, that I've looked up at when it comes to me, you know, narrating, um, stories, a lot of people actually did narrate this story, and I gotta say this story was definitely something, I'm not denying that one right now, like, this is a this story was actually was some story that I have um came across I guess once or twice, but at the time I wasn't really into creepy pastas, but I could definitely say right now that um this story was definitely something. I'm not gonna deny this one bit. Now, one of the big things I have to say about this story was that this story was is an older lost episode pasta. And it was written around the time before creepypastas became, you know, overly repetitive and with, um, you know, cliches all over the place and all that. I mean, yeah, I know it's a fictional story, so I'm willing to give it that. But I mean, to sit there and, you know, actually have the protagonist, you know, you know, talking about the show, give it some information. Then his friend sends him like an email that had the episode, this weird ass episode. The protagonist watches the episode, and then when they watch the episode, um, they see some messed up stuff. I mean, though, most of the America's Funniest videos are, are funny, but this episode that describes, you know, the stunts that they pulled in there is not funny. Like, I mean, most of them, the stunts they did were very dangerous. I mean, I know that's what the show basically is, but this one is pretty extreme, to be completely honest. I mean... If, yeah, if this episode ever were to exist, there's no doubt that that episode would really get banned. I'm not denying that one bit that this episode would definitely get banned. I remember, um, Dave the Useless narrated this story as well as, um, Crooks and Pasta, um, Gory Parodies. A lot of people actually narrated this story and, um, they had said their thoughts on this story, so this story was definitely something. I'm not denying that one bit, like... I haven't read this story in, like, a while. I think I did hear a few narrations of it. I believe Shadow did narrate this at one point, but I can't remember if he did or not. I think he did, but I'm not sure. So, this is a very good story and for what it is. It has a good concept. I mean, a good concept for a story that is an older one that doesn't have, you know, cliches or anything. Well, it does have cliches in it, but... At least, um, this is one of the older pastas that actually did, um, make sure the cliches worked. And it didn't, you know, sat there and, you know, go all over the place or something like that. So this story, I mean, the grammar of this story was pretty good. However, I did spot a few grammatical errors in this story. So, yeah, a few grammatical errors that do need to be fixed up. But I have to say, I know it's an older story, so I'm willing to excuse it that it's an older story. Like, it's an older story for what this one is. So, I guess with that being the case, and with that being said, I'm going to sit here and say this right now. Um, I don't know who the original author of this story is, so I'm going to leave it as anonymous for now. If I ever find out who the original author of this story is, I'll be sure to give the author proper credit. Because I'm going to make leave it as anonymous for now until said so otherwise. So, yeah, overall, this is a pretty good lost episode, um, Cree Pasta. I mean, it's a classic, well, not really a classic, but it's like one of the older Cree Pasta lost episode pastas that manages to do something good before cliches became overused. And I'm gonna sit here and say this right now that this story, um, yeah, I mean, this is an older story, Ray. so this is kind of why it got popular to begin with. So, yeah, I found it on the Creepypasta Land wiki. I don't even know why it was deleted from the regular Creepypasta wiki. That's honestly why I don't understand why it was, you know, um... I don't understand why it was removed from the regular Creepypasta wiki, because I do... I think it's, I think it's still on the regular Creepypasta wiki, but I'm not really sure because I haven't read it on there in a while. But yeah, please somebody tell me if it's on the regular Creepypasta wiki because I don't even remember if it got removed or not. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'm going to sit here and say this now. Like I'm going to say, this is only my own, simply my own personal opinion.
And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these um, creepy pastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of the story would have to be a 10 out of 10. I know it might be high, but, you know, still. I mean, I do like how the concept of the story went out. It does have a really interesting um, plot line and all that. I know it seemed a little bit cliched, but this story was written back before um, Lost Episode Creepypastas with Cliches became, you know, overused and repetitive. So I have to say, it's an older story. And that's something I'm willing to say. It's an older story. But other than that, it's still a relatively good Creepypasta. So anyways, that being said... What did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.